Welcome teachers and Jupiter Ed users. Um, today I wanted to talk about how to set up a lesson plan for your system, um, specifically for those who don't have to turn in lesson plans. There is the system here where you can set up lesson plans, but this is more used for school systems um, where they have to get their lesson plans approved or submitted. We don't require that. Our little cottage school, we don't have to turn in a lesson plan. So this is not something that I have to have. So I'm not going to use this because this is a pain in the hiney. Instead, I'm going to show you the quick and easy way to set it up, kind of like a to-do list, um, almost as an accountability system for yourself so that you have your structure laid out for the semester and you just have to fill in the blanks afterwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click New Assignment and before you get started, you need to determine your structure for your class. My structure is lessons on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday online. Thursday we meet and review those lessons and then over the weekend they have a homework assignment. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set that up. My first assignment, I'm just going to call it Monday. And then I'm going to set it for the first Monday of the year, which is the 15th. And I use the point system because points I'll, I could show you in another video why I use points. I'm not going to go into that here. But I prefer the point system because it actually allows greater grace and it allows for a higher average when it's calculated as opposed to percentages or grades. All right, so I am not going to show it to students or show it on the calendar. I don't want them to see it all until I have it put in. And I'm only going to put them in a few weeks ahead of the students. So I don't want them to be overwhelmed with a whole semester's worth of lessons that they can see. I just want them to see a couple, you know, a week, week and a half at a time. Um, and that way it's not overwhelming and, and a big deal. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in the instructions. And my instructions are pretty much the same for all the lessons. Watch the video. Take excellent notes in your reference notebook. Uh, circle any problems that you had difficulty with to review in class. So that is what they're going to do. They're going to write down the problems as they do them in their notebook. And then any problems that um, they have, let me add something in here. Work the problems in your reference notebook. Mm. Work the problems, work the following problems. In your reference notebook and type in the answer. To grade them. Circle any problems that you had difficulty with to review in class. All right, so those are my instructions. So they watch the video, they take notes, they work the problems that they're presented with in the module in their notebook, they type in the answer to get it graded, and then they are going to circle the problems they had difficulty with in class. So they can bring them to class on Thursday and we can review. So those are my instructions for each lesson. It's going to stay the same pretty much for all of those. So I'm going to update that. So it just basically update means to save it. And then I'm going to copy this for every week in the semester. And if you go look, now I have every Monday has an assignment. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete the week of Thanksgiving. I'm going to delete that assignment because we're not going to have one there. And we're not going to have one on the 12th because the 8th is the last day of school we have an extra week built in the system to complete our grades and get our grades turned in and lock them down. So that is why it goes one week past the end of the school semester. So now I have all of my Monday's lessons done. So I'm going to go back to here to this first Monday and I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to click right click and say copy. 
Now I'm going to click New Assignment, and I'm going to call this Tuesday. And I'm going to put the first Tuesday of the year right there. Again, points, lessons, don't show to students. And click under Directions, and I'm going to Paste. I did not have to type that, and it's exactly like the other. And I'm going to Update. When you update, then you are given the Copy button. Now I'm going to copy that and do the same thing I did before and copy it to every assignment for the week or one assignment every week for the semester. Done. So now all I have to do is go back and find, um, here it is, the week of Thanksgiving, delete that, and delete the last week when we aren't in school. All right, so you see kind of how I'm doing this. I'm creating a structure. So let me go to Tuesday. I'm going to pick the next day. Actually, cancel. I am going to do new assignment, and I'm going to call it Wednesday. And I'm going to click here and take that first Wednesday, unshow it to students, paste in my directions, update, copy, and if you look, I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday lessons for every week. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to find, uh, here it is, the Wednesday for Thanksgiving week and delete it. And then I don't really have to go out. I can just come down here to the bottom and select that last Wednesday and delete that. All right, done. Now I need to set up my homework assignment. So new assignment, and this I'm going to call this Sunday because my homework assignments are due Sunday. And I'm going to click that first. So here is the first Thursday. So they have the 19th, 20th, and 21st to do their homework assignment. And I'm going to unshow it, and I'm going to call it homework. That's my category. And I have new directions for homework. This is just going to be, I'm going to paste what I had before but there's no video. I'm going to just take out the first two sentences. And it's going to say, work the following problems in your reference notebook and type in the answer to grade them. Circle any problems you had difficulty with to review in class. So that still works. Um, there's just not a video over the weekend because there's no new lessons. It's just problems of what we've already gone over that week and then what we've already gone over to the, through the beginning of the year. So that would be the homework, uh, a typical homework assignment. So I'm going to update that to save it, and then I'm going to copy for every week of the year or of the semester. Uh, and then I'm going to go back out here, and I'm going to find the Sunday. Here it is. It doubles up after Thanksgiving. I'm not going to give them any homework that week. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick that last Sunday, and I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to pick the uh, Sunday here as well. So what I'm going to do now is set up the, um, I'm going to set up my midterm. And my midterm is going to be, uh, we have 16 weeks, no, 15 weeks. Now we have 16 weeks. My last week is going to be for the final exam. So that gives me 15 weeks for the first semester. So I'm going to pick the eighth week to do the midterm. So that gives me seven weeks of lessons and a midterm week. Seven weeks of lessons and then the semester exam week. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So this is the eighth week. So what I want to do is I want to have my midterm completed or turned in by Wednesday before we meet. So I'm going to rename that midterm exam. I'm going to change that to tests. And I am going to say here for my midterm exam, complete the problems in this um, assignment. You have until Wednesday by midnight to complete them. 
and then that's enough. That's all I have to do. So I am not going to do anything else for that. I'm going to leave that there. So I'm going to click update to save it done. And then I'm just going to come in here and get rid of the homework for that weekend because we didn't have any new lessons that week. And I'm going to get rid of the Monday and the Tuesday and the Sunday homework before. So now you can see by my calendar, all right, we go all the way through. This is week seven, right? And after week seven, what I'll do when I get to the midterm exam is when I show it to students and put it on their calendar, I will set it for six days before it is due. They can see it. So that gives them one week to complete their midterm. Um, and I'm also going to put in here, you may use your notes. And voila, that would be so that they, when it's blocked like that, they can see it. So because I only have one test in here right now, it's this one assignment is 40% of their grade. When I make the midterm exam, or not the midterm, but the semester exam, then this will change to 20% and the other one will be 20%, right? So, but that is what... Um, you will want to do at some point is figure out how you want to structure your midterm exam. Let me unshow this to students, but that's what I do. I give them a week to do it, but that's just because of the subject that I teach. You will do it however you want to do it for your class. But uh, you do have to change the category. Um, and for me, it's easier to keep everything under the same grading system. Um, it's just easier to keep it all the same and keep it straight in your head. And I just use points because that's what I like. Um, and I'll explain points and grading later, at, maybe in another video, um, why I like points over grades. But it's entirely up to you as to how you do it. So that is how I would set up my semester. So I would come down here, let me add in. Um, this is the last week that we have lessons before 12 8 is the last day of our semester so I would actually take this Wednesday here and I would change that to semester exam and I would turn that into a test and then I would change my directions to say um, what I said before on my other exam so I'm just gonna go up here to midterm and I'm going to highlight, I'm going to right click and copy. I'm going to go back down here to my semester exam and I'm going to, ooh, that got big, didn't it? Paste those, so it's the same directions for my tests. And then um, let's click update and done. So now I have the midterm exam and I have the semester exam. Well, if I have the semester exam here, I'm not going to want to have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday homework, no homework for the weekend before the semester exam because they will be doing the semester exam. And then I'll take out that Monday and then I'll take out that Tuesday as well. So you can see you can actually access the ones you've already set up through the drop down menu. You don't have to go back to the main, um, the main dashboard for this class, but I like to do it because I can see better what I'm selecting. It's entirely up to how you feel comfortable doing it. So now, um, on, what is it, December 1st, that would be the last Friday that we, or the last Thursday of class before the exam. Um, so they would have that next week, once they get home on Thursday, December 1st, they have until December 7th, that Wednesday at midnight, to complete their semester exam. So they have a whole week to do it at home, online. And then Thursday, they can come in and we can have a little bit of a, a relaxed party day. And I can pass out their final grades for the semester. 
Um, and what I'll do is I'll just pull up their grade report. Um, I'll quickly go through as they turn in their final exams, I'll finalize their grades. I'll basically just go in and check on Monday and Tuesday, maybe late Wednesday, and see who all, you know, has done their exams. I'll put their, make sure their final grade is in. And then what that does for me is I have that, I have that last week off of, um, in the system, we have another week built in to finalize our grades. Well, once school is over, once we have that last day of school, then I'm done. My grades have been finalized. But I keep, I, I make sure that I have all of my grades in as we go through the semester. So as they do lessons, um, I might go in on Wednesday evening and make sure everything is graded. Like some problems require manual grading, like graphing. Um, you know, do putting a point on the number line, you have to manually grade some of those. So I'll make sure anything that needs manual grading is graded as we go through the year. So there's, you know, they like to keep up on their grades, make sure that they know what they're doing. And the other thing too, that I do is on Wednesday, I'll go in and if they haven't done Monday's assignment, they haven't done Tuesday's assignment, I give them zeros. And when they see that zero or they see their grade drop, then that reminds them, oh crap, I got missing assignments. Let me go in and do these. So put in the zeros pretty quickly, you know, um, and the zero, even those kids who have something going on, like they got a death in a family or whatever, it's not, you're not being mean to them. You are helping them to see that they've missed something. You're not doing them any favors by not giving them the zeros. Giving them the zeros tells them that they're behind and that they need to do the work. Um, that does not mean you won't give them grace and give them an extension because they're going through something difficult. It just, it kind of makes them a little um, conscious of, uh, yeah, I, I can't take too long of a break. I need to get back on my schoolwork, which if they're going through something difficult, could actually be good for them because it gives them something to focus on other than whatever problems they're having, right? I find with the students that sometimes the best way to love on them is to give them an assignment because then they're focusing on something outside of themselves. They're focusing on this curriculum or this assignment or this lesson, and it takes their mind off the difficult thing that they're going through for, you know, at least a half an hour. And it gives their mind a break and it, it actually does refresh them a little bit. Um, unless it's math and they hate math, of course, then that's, you know, a whole other thing. But <laughs> my point is, uh, giving them a zero is impetus. It helps them to see where they are. If they have, don't have their zeros in for missing assignments, it gives them a false sense of, achievement when they have a good grade they need to see what they haven't done so they know exactly where they are so the faster you can put those zeros in for missed assignments the better like the next day if they haven't done Tuesdays on Wednesday give them a zero for Tuesdays on Wednesday right so Wednesday morning look at everything and give them zeros you know um, on Monday morning if they haven't done Sunday's homework give them a zero because then they still could go in on Monday or Tuesday and do Sunday's homework and, um, you know, get some points. Basically, that's the way I have my system set up. So put in the zeros. It helps them to see where they are. It's an honest representation of their grade. And we want to have transparency in that grading system. We want them to see what they actually have for their own benefit. All right, that's all I have. Um, all I'll do now from now on through the rest of the semester is I will stay a couple of weeks ahead. I'll make sure that I have about three or four weeks. Actually, I'll, I'll probably do um, five or six weeks before the school year starts. And for me, here's what that looks like because I've already written all these modules last year. For me, what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll click attach and I'll go to Junopod and I will find lesson one and two 
hopefully I can find here it is um, algebra 2 lesson 1 2 I'll, I'll select that module and I will click attach and you can see when I attach the module that the points change I have 12 points in that module and once I do that then I will show it to the students show it on their calendar and I'll say set online now and I'll say let students redo this anytime and this green circle here means that the pod is available for them to do and they have not opened it yet when they click on it if they just click on it and open it up and close it back this little green circle will turn to three dots and you'll be able to see that if you hover over their name the date and time that they opened it that they were last in it so it tells us a lot when you see a blue check mark then that means they've submitted it or a blue asterisk a blue asterisk means that there's some manual grading that has to be done by you a blue check mark just means you need to finalize the score and so what I like to do is if they don't have like it's 12 points possible um, what I like to do is if this is a 12 here then I just click it and it goes into their score but if it's less than 12 I will open it up and I'll click grade manually which is available once they've submitted it and then I will look and see which one they missed and sometimes the reason I do that um, sometimes it is a formatting error uh, for instance in math you have to have a space between the answer and the unit of measure that's the way you, you do it and if they don't leave that space it marks it wrong so they could have the right answer they just didn't put a space in there so then I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll mark that correct so even if it doesn't have an asterisk for manual grading um, if it's not a 100% I'll still go and look at it just to make sure they get all the points that they deserve I want them to get their best score and if they feel like they did all of it they got all of it right but then they don't get 100% then they feel cheated and slighted and they should because if they did the work they should get the credit so that is the way that I do it you do it however you want to um, let the Lord lead you in that and um, I'll go back and look here you can see now this is dark so that is your evidence that the student can see it on their to-do list now right so um, I will go in and I will just attach these lessons so attach this would be actually what I would do for Monday is I would change Mondays to the name of the lesson I would say lesson one through two so whenever I'm in class I can say in lesson one and two did you have any problems that you had difficulty with did you circle any problems in your notebook so then they can go right to that lesson and they can tell me if you give them a long drawn out title here then it's harder for you to reference in class put your directions in the directions and let the title be something easy to reference like uh, chapter one unit two or, or you know um, unit three chapter four lesson one whatever it is but something that points directly to where they need to be in their notebook or in their textbook um, but put your instructions down here um, that makes it easy for the students so then when I click update the lesson up here changes and you can see it changes here that also helps me because then I know what module when I'm looking at my dashboard I can see um, what's going on you know where they are how far they are because it'll tell me here like all there's all green circles so this is a green circle right once this changes if I have someone turn something in then this changes to a blue check mark or a blue asterisk and that tells me that within that lesson I have something I need to do if it's a gray check mark then that tells me that it's complete like everybody's turned everything in and everything has been graded for that lesson so for those lessons um, you know you're done and you can ignore them 
And so you're looking for the green stuff whenever we go through here. The green and the blue. The blue means you have something to do. The green means they haven't done it yet. And they're not finished with it. So that, that is going to give you a little bit of a heads up on there. Um, so something else that I wanted to show you on here. When you click a student's name, you can see their individual grades on each lesson. Right? Which is awesome. So you can see exactly what that student has done on each of those lessons and it gives you the total number of points for each one of those lessons as well. So you can see that. You can also make a comment here that only the student will see on their screen that is on their direction screen for that assignment. So you could say you need to redo this lesson or oh, why haven't you turned this in? Uh, you can say uh, great job. You could put in, you can even drop in these cute little stickers. Like if they get 100%, you could drop that in. Or if they did a really good job, you could drop that in. If they didn't do so hot, you could drop, drop in the cry emoji. But there's even more. You could There's a bunch of other ones here. If they turned in a paragraph that was awesome and it just it touched your heart, you could put in the heart symbol. You know, there's tons of little things that you can do to make grading fun. Um... So you can even customize messages here. You could write in some comments where you have some options. So I could say, good job. I could say, uh, you need to redo this lesson. And then when I'm done, I go over here and those options are available and I could just click one of those and it drops into my comment, but I could also still drop in the sticker, right? And it shows up. And uh, I wanna show you how that looks for the student. I'm gonna click done here. Um, for the student, this is what she sees. Let me go to Sarah. Sarah Eggins is who I was using. So if I log in as Sarah and I go to my Algebra 2 class, this is the lesson, right? That And she has a blue asterisk that tells her that it means a new grade. Click to see what the feedback was. It says, good job, and she gets that 100% sticker, which is awesome. You know, you want to see that when you open up a lesson. Um, she, she doesn't even have to go any further. She knows she got 100% on that, on that and... Um, I'm praising her for it. So it's another way to communicate with your students um, without feeling like you are, you know, praising too much in front of students that don't get it. It's like private praise. And private praise, you know, praise in public is awesome. But to me, private praise is a little bit more genuine um, because it's just between you and her. And she, she gets that, you know, she gets that you went out of your way to just tell her, you know, how she's doing to make her feel better or to show her um, that you do care. They like being singled out um, and talked to like that. So I'm actually going to go in here. Let me go back to that class. Let me go back to Sarah. I'm going to take this off. Um take nothing and I'm going to take this good job out because she obviously hasn't done the lesson yet. But then when I say done, it goes back to a summary of all the grades. All right. So that is all I had for um, showing you how to structure and give yourself this lesson plan for the year. So it's just going to keep me on track. It's going to keep me putting the lessons and the work out there so that I know, um, what I need to do. It's my to-do list as a teacher and it's going to hold me accountable for putting these lessons out there. If something comes up, can I delete one? Absolutely. But it's also going to make it to where, oh, I need to get these things done um, and then I can be three weeks ahead, right? So I can see what I need to do. I hope that this has helped you. I hope this is, um, you know, a tool that you, uh, can use to stay on track and um, make it a little bit easier so you don't have to type all of those directions out yourself you can copy them 
and so you can set up your structure a little bit better. You might not have three lessons a week in a homework. You might just have one project a week that they have to turn in and bring it on Thursday. That's fine too. Set up a Thursday assignment for whatever it is that they have to bring into class. And, you know, if you do grades, you can set it up for grades. That's fine. I think the only thing I wanted to show you for grading um, on here was about bonus points, but we'll go over that later. I'll show you how to set that up. Um, and that's all I have for now. So this was long enough, I think. And I will see you when school starts. Bye for now.